he is an actor so popular he doesn't dare complain about his public. But the trouble is the pictures he directs, hailed by the rest of the world in Italy, are often all but flops. Whereas each picture he acts in is invariably number one at the box office. Now, I think the Italians are right about him as a star, and I know the rest of us are right about him as a director. He's one of the few in history who really deserve to be called great. We find him here in this dark and cutting room working on his latest film, and very enthusiastic about his leading lady, so Gina. She's so Italian. <laughs> uh, you know, speaking of what's typically Italian, we were discussing the Italian public a little earlier with Rosanna Bronson. Do actors always have such violent ups and downs in this country? Always. For instance, myself, I have died. Five you have died? Yes, five times. As an actor, you mean? As an actor. And uh, I, uh, I was born, uh, born again five times. <laughs> <laughs> for a beginning to the story of Lola Brigida, I guess we might as well start here on the Spanish steps. Well, I'll admit this is going way back to Gina's ancestors. We used to gather on these steps to wait for a job. This was a sort of outdoor model agency. And it's a fact that the best artist models in all Italy hail from Gina's hometown. For centuries, people in the mountain village of Subiaco have been noted for their remarkable beauty. Now, Gina was never a painter's model. She's a painter herself. This is one of her pictures done when she was an art student. As a model, Gina posed for comic books. Now, in Italy, they're illustrated by photographs, as you see. And like most of our comic books, these are not comical by intention. And the plots are pure soap opera. Tennis, anyone? This photograph is not from the comic books, though I'll have to admit that the mustache is pretty funny in itself. And in the days when that was taken, Gina, who was just making a start in the movies, used to live somewhere in this neighborhood, in a house not far from the railway station. I can't remember just which one. Well, actually, it wasn't very long before she was on her way up in the world. For the next few years, I lost track of her personally. Professionally, up and up and up is just where Gina kept right on going. I'm, I'm pretty sure that just as soon as she was playing bigger parts, she was living in better houses. But as fast as her billing improved, so did her address. That's a safe enough guess. And I do know that finally Gina's popularity rose to such furious intensity that she was forced into that ultimate luxury, moving out of town altogether. Thus, after struggling in the big city, our country girl could now afford to go back to the country, in the suburbs this time, comfortably close to town, uh, just outside the old walls, but pleasantly rustic, rural, but very chic. All roads, they say, lead to Rome. Well, in the days when they really did, this was a major highway, also a fashionable suburb. Socially, it's still quite an address, and historically, a magical name. This is the Via Appia Antica, the old Appian Way. And there it is, Gina's place again. Here we are, back again at these famous gates, but what do you know? It turns out we have exactly time enough, before keeping our appointment, for a brief switch over to the studio. A coincidence? Call it the magic of television. Duchesses, heirs of the oldest and grandest princely houses live out here on the ancient Roman road near the Lola Brigida estate. But not so very many miles away is where Gina grew up. The house, like the villa, is fairly close to Rome. But in human terms, a whole world separates the two houses. One, a country estate. The other, just a place in the country, shared by maybe half a dozen families. The country villa of a major figure in Italy's most significant industry. The house in the country village where she was born. We've already told you the name of the place where this happened and the date. Well, excuse us, the, the date is none of our business. Now, where, where, you ask, are the famous beauties of Subiaco? Well, we know about one of them. She left for the big city just as soon as she could. Oh, there's still plenty of 
Lola Bridget is around town, relatives. Here's one, for instance, Gino Lola Bridget. But the town was just about destroyed in the war, and it's still pretty empty looking and sad. Some of the people we talked to here weren't very nice, I'm afraid, about Gina. They, they aren't really proud of her success. Many seem jealous. Well, there must be something we can say about Subiaco. A bit of quick research informs us that St. Benedict uh, founded here the, the first of his monasteries. He was, of course, the founding father of all monasteries. However, he soon moved to Monte Cassino. At this moment, 1,500 years ago, history takes leave of Subiaco, never to return. We'll take our cue from history. And from Gina, too. She left town in a hurry, and the urge is understandable. But uh, before we go calling on Gina, I'd like to take you a couple of miles east to this big film studio for a word with Gina's closest friend. Somebody who knew Gina intimately for nine years before they even met. This is the story of two lonely little girls one living in the mountains near Rome and one far to the north near the Austrian border. Miss Anna Gruber, and here she is. She put an ad in a children's magazine asking for somebody to write her, and the answer she liked best came from Subiaco. Yes. So they began exchanging letters. An average, I think you said, Miss Gruber, of two a day. What did you find to write about? All the day, what we are doing all the day, what is uh, happening in the school. I suppose Gina, at least, uh, wrote about movies. No, no, no. Well, if she had time to send you 14 or 15 long letters a week for, what was it, nine years? Uh, yes. I guess Gina can't have had many real friends in Subiaco. No, she had not many friends, and uh, um, she was really, I think, alone. Alone. What about her schoolmates? No, no, she, they, they were really normal girls living in, uh, in a little village. And uh, Gina has uh, something more. I mean, she had dreams and needed to express herself. And also, she was uh, very mm -hmm. poor. Now, of course, Gina has just about everything. And you've gone into moving pictures yourself, haven't you, Miss Gruber? But you flatly refused to let her help you. Yes, because uh, I, I thought that uh, it can uh, divide uh, Gina from me and me from Gina. Well, earlier, of course, you were divided by the war. In those years, the north and south of Italy were divided, and your correspondence had to stop. And from Gina, there was silence. You wrote to uh, some of her schoolmates in Subiaco, and they wrote back that Gina was dead. Why do you think they said that? I think it, it was for jealousy. Jealous. They understand that Gina was uh, looking for something more than, uh, than, Subiaco. Uh, than Subiaco. Well, Gina found something more, of course. She found world success. And then you old handbells finally found each other. And I receive a postcard. Gina saying, I am not dead. She hoped you could meet. And finally that happened, didn't it? She came up north to you. Now, for the first time, these two were going to see each other face to face. Oh, I was so excited. And after all those years, there she was, standing at your door. I said, come, uh, come in uh, and uh, be welcome. In the house. And so when we come in, and she said, that's the living room, that's uh, the kitchen. From your letter, she already knew everything and everybody. She know my mother, and really, in uh, five minutes... It was just as though they'd always been together. And what's even more wonderful, I think, is that today they're just the same close friend. But tell me, Miss Gruber, how did you feel when Gina first started turning up on the covers of magazines and plastered on those big posters all over your town? Really, I felt that uh, I, lo I lost her. You felt you'd lost her? Because uh, she was, yes, my friend, but uh, she became to be Gina for everybody. So you were glad of her success? Because uh, I say maybe she will be happy in uh, her life. You think she is? She's not uh, always happy because uh, she's always uh, afraid to uh, to be not good. Uh, Gina, afraid? Oh, always afraid. But what's so strange is that such an ambitious girl should have had no ambitions at all as a child for the very thing she now lives for. Think of all those letters, uh, 14 of them a week for nine years, and not one of them, am I right, Miss Gruber, about movies? No, absolutely no. But for any young girl, a little daydreaming about being a movie star is only normal. She was so, um, uh, how to say, uh, never thinking that uh, she's a nice girl. A beautiful girl, you mean? She's